Hello everyone, I'm Urs Reicher, photographer and consultant at Brown Color. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, photographer and photography instructor. Welcome Carl, this time we meet in my studio yeah. for some amazing new how-tos. Yeah, it's good to be here in Switzerland. Uh, we've got a lovely studio here, Urs. So Urs, why don't you tell the good people exactly what how-to is? Well Carl, how-to is a fantastic educational resource from Brown Color. We've created lots of reference images, each one with its own lighting diagram and description. That's right, Urs, and to access this great information, you simply need to follow Broncolor through their website or like them on their Facebook page for regular updates. So what have you got lined up for this how-to video? Uh, today I would like to shoot fashion. Yep. And we have, uh, as a model, we have Sharon here, mm -hmm. and uh, we dressed her all in white. Okay. The background is all white, and we shoot white and white fashion. Uh, and I try to solve the problem of the separation, you know, keeping that the white separate from the white background. Exactly. Yes. yes. So your white background, you're illuminating with two soft boxes, I see. Yes. And your main illumination on the model is going to be? The illumination on the model is the, the main subject we talk about. It's the para. We set up a 222 para. Yeah. And I would like to explain a little bit how to work with para because it's a kind of a different approach it's not just the, the, the common work with soft box, it's, it's a different way how to look at the light, how to change the light on a okay. para. Should we take a look at that para and how we're going to work with that? Absolutely, we do this, okay. yeah. So as the para 222, it's one of my favorite lighting modifiers. Um, tell me about how we're going to use this for this shot then. Uh, I can understand that you like it, you know, because it's one of the most versatile lights. Yep. You can use it as a huge spot. It's a parabolic shape. Yep. It's very shiny. And uh, so you get like a huge spot, like a huge Fresnel of about two and a half meters diameter. It's yes. amazing light. Yeah, it's but we use it differently today, and I'm going to defocus it. Okay. I'm going to defocus it, which means I change the lamp head's position. Yep. And then because it's very shiny, you see that the center of the power reflector doesn't reflect any light anymore. No. So it's dark from the center, and it's like it's a huge ring flash. The edges. So yep. there are light coming from here, from here, from here, all around. Yeah. The camera, I will be here with the camera, and I have all side lights. Yeah, you get these 24 little pockets of hard light, don't you, coming around in this big circle. Exactly. All the 24 lights, they will hit the, the model in the middle of the body. Yep. But of course, on the peripheric, I have only half the umbrella active. Yep. Okay, so I must get just one F-stop less on the arms, on the, on, on the, on the sides, sides of the body. Oh, exactly, yep. on the shoulders, on top. Yep. It will shape yeah. around the and, face and, very nicely. And the beauty with the diameter of this light is the light can wrap around the photographer. Yes. It's such an easy light to work with in many ways because you don't have to worry about any elaborate setup. You've just got this one light behind you and you exactly. can concentrate on the model and the poses. Exactly, yeah. yes. Should we get the model in then? Get I think started. so, yeah. Yeah, great, okay. Okay, so today we have Sharon with us. Hi, Sharon. She is the model and the stylist. She does all together today. Good. Very Please talented. Watch out, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite tables. It's more or less stable, huh? What are you using, uh, white acrylic here today, Urs? Yes, it's white acrylic, and important, the shiny side is up. Yeah. And below the white acrylic, it's just uh, uh, white paper as well, that it's as white as possible. Yeah, so you're getting a nice reflective, glossy surface. Exactly, the idea is when I shoot white fashion on a white background, and I do this on paper, I need here, just next to her, legs, I need a lot of light and this can bounce back. Yes. Yeah. Now the idea is that I have actually no light on the table, no. but the table appears white yeah. because it's shiny and the white background reflects in the table. Yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. And you've got a couple of flags and blacks on the either side of the model here. Yes, exactly. Um, when you, I explained before that we are going to use the para defocused. Yeah. When it's defocused, the light angle is very wide, very open. Mm -hmm. And you can see that my studio walls are not black. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of light bouncing back yeah. and the light that bounces back hits her here on the shoulders, on the legs, on, um, everywhere Side around, the on, the, yep. on the peripheric. And that's exactly where I have the separation problems yep. from the white clothing to the white background. So this just keeps holds a little bit of extra detail to keep that shadow line, to keep the separation. Exactly. This increases the contrast to the edges, to the both yep. sides. Yeah. So now, uh, 
we should be looking at the focusing of the para and checking from the model's perspective, I guess, Absolutely. that it's effective. Yes. So here we have to check from the model's perspective that the para is effective. Exactly. That's very important. The, the trick is always to go to the model, look back, yep. where's the light coming from? And when I do this now, I see the position is correct. It's straight to the model, but I don't see any light. No, the light is, is almost missing. It's outside of the it's edge outside, of the periphery. Exactly, yes. yeah. um, because I'm planning to start with a full body shot. So obviously the power is pretty far away. Yeah, it's further away. And this means that I have to refocus a little bit. Yeah, okay. Do you want to do that while I check and yes, see, uh, see if the light yeah. comes into the right position? It has to go in a little bit more. Yeah, there it's getting brighter. Maybe a little bit more. That's, that's looking good. Okay. Now we've got a nice illumination around exactly. the, uh, the center the edge. should be dark yep. and the light should come from all around. Yep, that's working okay. nicely. Great. Fantastic. Okay, so we're ready to start shooting. Yeah, let's try okay. this. Uh, camera is ready. So, you can do everything you want. You can move around. The light is symmetrical, so you're absolutely free. You go. Ready. All right, two more. Actually, this looks like a fantastic portrait. That looks really good. Uh, so, are you going to go in for some uh, closer portraits now? Would, yeah? yeah, because and, it looks really nice. Yeah, and as we said, it doesn't matter that you're in front of the light. It's still going to wrap around you. So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even when I stand here, there's no light behind me, so there's no shadow on her. Yeah. I can easily make close-ups from here. All right. Good. All right, so uh, what do we have? Let's take a look. Well, you've got lovely pure white on the background there, Urs, yeah. and the uh, model is well exposed. Let's have a close look at this, you know, because uh, looking at the screen is one thing, but metering is better. Eh? Yes. So I have a look here at the brightest part in the center of the body, and I have a 240 average white. So yep. this is a good clean white, yep. but not overexposed. Yep. And at the edges here, it's uh, just around 200, even a little bit below. Yep. So left and right yeah. on the shoulders, edge. everywhere, just yeah. a nice Holding fall on the picture. And we've got 255 on the background. We've got white. 255 on the background, and we get 255 on the table as on well. On the table, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, of course, the, yeah. the power from the front helps as well a little bit. Yep. But even if I would use now power as a side light, you know, there would be shadows on the table, but the shadows are reflected away yeah. because of the white acrylic. But it's really nice having that outline detail, that edge detail, that shadow, just holding her into the picture there, That's separating exactly. her from the background, even though she's in the white. So it's worked really, really well. That's exactly the reason why I use the para. And the other thing is you, you might try to do this differently as well, but when you have side lights separating her you have a given position. The model has to be here and look this way. And with the power, she can move freely. Yeah, more freedom, yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. can move with the camera. I can make a close-up portrait. I can make a full body. She can jump and do whatever she wants. And yeah. the light is always yeah. just there with a the perfect separation. Yeah, absolutely. It gives you a lot more flexibility. The light's very versatile. Yeah. The model can be more um, versatile. And you've got the freedom of movement absolutely. as well. So it's just yeah. a, such a fantastic light to work with. And even when you went in to do the, uh, the close-up portrait, you haven't really yeah. had to adjust anything. It's just nope. yeah. straight in there, and you can take the shot exactly. moving forwards without moving anything. Mm -hmm. We continue just another minute on the portraits. Yep. I get a little closer with the para, then yeah, I get, a, I get more three-dimensionality. Sure. And I would like to show you how to create side lights. With yeah, paras. okay. Let's do, Let's do this. So we bring this closer. Yep. And this is more the optimum shooting distance for the para, where the distance is almost the diameter of the light. Uh, yeah. close I always enough. shoot as close as possible, yeah. because then the light is further away from the axis, yeah. and then I get more three-dimensional. Three-dimensional on the but shot. But sometimes, yeah. you know, like before, when I shoot full body, I just need the distance. Yeah. But when I know that I'm going to shoot the portrait, I get yeah. closer. But again, now that we've moved the light, we have to refocus and adjust and Absolutely. check from the yeah, model's exactly. perspective. So now it's just the opposite. Before yep. the reflections were outside, yep. now the reflections now are far too deep in. in. Yeah. So we have to adjust the light now again because of the new distance to get the uh, peripheric of light in the right position. Yes. Now I guess it's too deep inside. Exactly, it's just the opposite. Now when you're far away you have to refocus a little bit. Yep. Now we are very close and the reflections are not 
outside, but they're too far inside. Yeah. So I don't even use the full size of the power up. Yeah. So in this situation, I just pull the lamp head out, yeah. and now the reflections move all the way out. They move further away from the camera axis. I get more three-dimensional. More three-dimensional. And at this sort of shooting distance, generally the focusing rod is all the way out. Exactly. Yeah. When, you, when the shooting distance is more or less the diameter, then the lamp head is all the way out. That's right. the, the thumb right. rule. And everything and else you have to yeah. check from the camera. Yeah. I think this position, this uh, setup actually gives the best uh, lighting from this particular modifier. Yes, fantastic. Little up with the head. Yep. Thanks. Good. Okay, I want to show you one more thing. If I want a side light, I don't have to move the power up. I simply do this. So just turn the power up rather than create a couple of light degrees. Inside. Now, this side is inactive, Dark. it's not reflecting. This is reflecting like crazy, so all the light comes from one side. And I get the side light with zero time. Just a few shots and I can let you see on the screen how this works. Yes. Okay, just a long. Yeah, and two more without glasses. Glasses down. Let you see more what's happening on the face. Yeah, good. And the last one, very, very, very last one. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Let's, Let's have a look. It. So as here's the results looking good. Yeah, that's the, how we started, you know, just symmetrical again. Yep, you can see the lovely light of the power Exactly, you can see it in the eyes, you know, it's, uh, as well it explains that the quality of the light, it's, it's not one big soft light, there are 24 hard lights yep. that bring an amazing... Really giving that three-dimensional effect, you can see the shadow tone on the edge of the face, yep. and then the highlights here in the centre, yep. which is uh, giving that perfect beauty look. Exactly. And, and then, yeah, you can turn crazy, you know, and play with, with this reflections. Was, you this know. was amazing seeing you in the glasses and the big power reflection yeah. in there as well. Fantastic. Exactly. I really um, like this one. Exactly. Here we just, because I'm even closer, you know, the light is further away from the camera and we have even a, a quicker fall off to the edges. You can see how nicely the light falls off on the shoulders. Yes. The, arm, the, the arm contours are almost black, you know, yep. so you get actually a high contrast, yep. wonderful three-dimensionality. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. And then by tilting, you know, you remember the last yes, thing, by, just by tilting a little bit, yep. you get immediately a side light. Yes, yeah, and you've got that crescent moon shape of the light. That's the explanation light. why it works. You know, if I zoom in, you see that only one side of para is active and the other side doesn't reflect yeah. anymore. That's why I get a yeah. side light, not because I moved the entire umbrella, only because I tilted it. So I think really this how-to video has demonstrated absolutely perfectly the versatility of the Para 222 light and the many different types of shots you can do with it. A few of the many types, you know. We, yes. we, we only used it defocused. You can use it focused. Hard light, yeah. Hard light with different angles. Again, we have diffusers and so on and so on. The limitations are never ending. Sounds like you need to make another how-to video about all of those. Yeah. If you're around, yeah. let me know. Maybe next time. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs>